It's here. Christmas Eve is here. Are you ready? The thing we waited for, it's finally arrived, right? The birth of Jesus into the world. It is exciting. This sacred, holy night, it's here. So I have a question. I want you to ask yourself, how do you feel? Right now, this moment, you can shout out loud if you want, or you can just say to yourself, how do you feel? I'm excited. <laughs> Tired, yeah. So some of us, some of us, we're, we're excited. We are maybe having their best day of the year, or maybe just excited about what's going to happen tomorrow. Some of us are tired, exhausted of all the holiday to-do and those holiday parties. Maybe some of us just feel normal. This is just any other day. Here we are. It's church. Maybe some of us feel a little anxious, wondering how long I'm going to preach because there's a lot to do before the big day tomorrow. It's all right. There's no right or wrong answer here. Just do a little check-in. How are you feeling? And then try to just be, for a moment, just be here. And I'm going to give you all the point of this sermon right away. God meets us where we are. Wherever we are, if we are excited or tired, just normal, anxious, God meets us where we are. And that's the miracle of this thing that we're celebrating. God meets us where we are. Meets us as ordinary people living very real human lives. Now just because I told you the point doesn't mean I'm going to stop talking. Just a little longer. I'm going to expand on that. You know, we've heard the nativity story probably most of us many, many times. God comes to Mary and tells her that she's going to have a baby. And that baby is going to be the child of God. And then Joseph gets a little worried and wonders if he should break off their engagement. But then it's told by an angel that oh, it's okay. The child is of the Lord. Then Mary and Joseph, they travel to Bethlehem, where Jesus is born and is laid in a manger. Jesus is then visited by the shepherds and wise men who come to see this child king. It's a familiar story, probably. But what we shouldn't miss, even on the 100th rereading, is that this story is a story full of ordinary people just like us doing ordinary things. Don't believe me? It's okay, I've got some examples. People are dealing in this story with politics and government bureaucracy. Mary and Joseph have to submit themselves to a census. Their reality is one in which the empire, the government, demands something of them. People are dealing with travel. Anyone else needing to deal with travel over the next few days? Mary and Joseph were too. They have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That's about a 90 mile trip, which would have taken at least minimum three days on foot and on a donkey. They have to pack, find places to sleep, get all their snacks, and hit the road at the right time of day. People in this story, they are dealing with their human bodies. At this stage of her pregnancy, Mary would have been having some increased cramps, lower back pain, and fatigue. Her breasts are heavy, maybe even leaking milk. Mary is, after all, a real woman with a real body, and she is real pregnant. And people are dealing with work. Mary and Joseph might have been expecting the extraordinary given these visits from the angels, but the shepherds, they're not expecting anything. They're just doing their jobs. They're not on vacation. They don't have the night off. They're just at work. Politics, travel, bodies, work, does any of that feel familiar? 
close to home? You see, the story of Jesus, his birth, even though it's from so long ago, it's about actual human beings. Isn't that nice? <laughs> a story about real human beings. He's born to a young mother and father who don't know what they're doing. He's born in a humble location, nothing fancy at all. His birth is announced to low-income laborers. The Nativity story teaches us some important things. You don't have to be rich and powerful to meet Jesus. You do not have to be enlightened or serene or meditate every day for 30 minutes to meet Jesus. You don't even have to be particularly good to meet Jesus. Jesus meets us wherever we are. I was at the jail a couple of weeks ago. Some of you probably don't know this, but I, I volunteer at the county jail as a chaplain, and I lead a little spirituality group. I was actually there this afternoon before I came here for this service. And a few weeks ago after our group session, a woman came up to talk to me. I'll call her Janelle. And Janelle sat down and said, what is a chaplain? And I laughed <laughs> and I said, that's a really good question. It's not a word we use very often. It can be a little confusing. And so I, I said that the chaplain's basically someone who's just there to listen. And I said we could talk about religion or spirituality, that we could pray if she wanted. We could just chat about whatever was on her mind that day. And I said, does that sound okay to you? And Janelle said, yeah, it does. And she sat down. And we talked together for about 45 minutes, which is actually a really long time for my jail visits. And I'm not going to share what we talked about. That's her story after all, not mine. But I do want to share with you this evening what I experienced in talking with her. So just to set the scene a bit, we're sitting at a metal table that's bolted to the floor. And it's sort of like one of those cafeteria-style tables with those round seats attached to the table. And we're in a residential unit. And that's basically where there's just one big room where the women do everything. It's where they sleep, it's where they bathe, where they eat, where they hang out. All day long. I can see all of their beds, actually, from where I'm sitting. There's not a lot of privacy. And it's very crowded and it's very noisy because everything's going on. The TV is blaring, the showers are running, the toilets are flushing, the microwave is dinging, the correctional officer is calling out for people to come and go, other conversations are happening. It is far from a peaceful or silent place. But here, Janelle and I sit across from one another and we, we talk. And I want you to be able to, to envision a little bit of what that was like. She was a young woman of color with these big, bright, expressive eyes. And she was really quite young, just about 19 years old. And she told me that she is a mom, that she gave birth to a little baby boy just nine weeks before she was detained. And that she'd been waiting for her trial for seven months there in the county jail. And her son, oh, her son, he is beautiful. And she showed me in some pictures. He is just precious. Same, same big eyes. And she described for me what it was like when he was born. Now he was crying as babies do. And crying and crying. And then they put him on her chest. And he stopped. She looked at those big eyes and she just fell in love. And as I sat there talking with her, there was just this one thought going through my mind again and again and again. I just kept thinking, this could be Mary. This could be Mary. Because at another time and another place, there was another young woman who was so unsure about what the future holds. And in another time and another place, there was a young mother who fell in love. And when I left 
the jail that day, I sat in my car and I just wept. I just cried and cried because I was, first off, just so mad. I was so mad at our system of incarcerating people in this country. I was so mad and when I get really mad, I cry. And I also cried as this precious mother and little baby are separated during these crucial first months of his life. And I also cried because I felt like I had experienced something <clears throat> so sacred. I knew that I had just met God in that jail. I got this amazing opportunity to minister to someone who at another time, in another place, could have been the mother of the person I call my Savior. In the midst of my pretty ordinary day, in the midst of a pretty perverse and upsetting place, God just showed up. I, as a person and as a pastor, I'm a pretty firm believer of what Jesus says later on when he like, grows up and starts his own ministry. And he says, what you do to other people, what you do to people who are hungry or who are in jail or who are thirsty, you're doing that to me. And what that means for me is that when I get to be with other people, God shows up. And God showed up that day for me in a big way. And throughout Advent, right, at this church we've been singing the carol, of Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And that word, Emmanuel, means God with us. Jesus is God with us. That's what we are celebrating. This evening, tomorrow, this miracle, this amazing thing that God is with us. That extravagant love that God meets us where we are, wherever we are. Church, the beautiful stained glass windows, jail, without windows, houses, cars, planes. God is with us. Emmanuel is going to be with us in the midst of whatever happens tomorrow. Emmanuel is with us if we've got work, if we've got travels, if we're with tightly packed family obligations rushing from one place to another. We will meet Jesus in the expected and the unexpected. We will meet Jesus even when things don't go according to plan. We will meet Jesus. Sometimes just right where we are. Exactly how God breaks into this world on Christmas. The holy is made flesh and comes forth in a rush of pain and blood and cries of astonishment and recognition. The same way that each one of us came into being. Christmas is a reminder to us that God meets us where we are in the ordinary human vessel. So keep your eyes open and watch 